dedication to a roadside harp by louise imogen Guiney. read for librivox dot org by nemo to dora and hester sigerson there in the druid brake if the cuckoo be awake again oh take my rhyme and keep it long for the sake of a bygone primrose time you of the star-bright head that twilight thoughts sequester you to your native fountains led like to a young muse garlanded dora and hester march eighteen ninety three end of dedication to a roadside harp by louise imogen Guiney. This recording is in the public domain. Peter Rugg, the Bostonian, by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. One. The mare is pawing by the oak. The chase is cool and wide, for Peter Rugg, the Bostonian, with his little son beside, the women loiter at the wheels in the pleasant summer tide and when wilt thou be home father and when good husband say the cloud hangs heavy on the house what time thou art away he answers straight he answers short at noon of the seventh day fail not to come if god so will and the weather be kind and clear farewell farewell but who am i a blockhead reign to fear god willing or god unwilling i have said it i will be here he gathers up the sunburnt boy and from the gate is sped he shakes the spark from the stones below the bloom from overhead till the last roofs of his own town pass in the morning red upon a homely mission north unto york he goes through the long highway broidered thick with elder blow and rose and sleeps in sound breakers at every twilight's close Intense upon his heedless head frowns Agamenticus, knowing of heaven's challenger the answer, even thus the patience that is hid on high doth stoop to master us. 2. Full light are all his parting dreams, desire is in his brain, he tightens at the tavern post the fiery creature's reign. Now eat thine apple six years, child, we face for home again. They had not gone a many mile with nimble heart and tongue, when the lone thrush grew silent, the walnut woods among, and on the lulled horizon a premonition hung. The babes at Hampton schoolhouse, the wife with lads at sea, search with a level lifted hand the distance bodingly, and farmer folk bid pilgrims in under a safe roof tree. The mowers mark the newberry how low the swallows fly. They glance across the southern roads, all white and fever dry, and the river anxious at the bend beneath a thinking sky. But there's one abroad was born to disbelieve and dare. Along the highway furiously he cuts the purple air. The wind leaps in the startled world as hounds upon a hare. With brawl and glare and shudder ope the sluices of the storm. The woods break down, the sand upblows, in blinding volleys warm. The yellow floods and frantic surge familiar fields deform. From evening until morning his skill will not avail, And as he cheers his youngest born his cheek is spectre pale, For the bonny mare from courses known has drifted like a sail. 3. In some wild crag he sees the dawn unsheath her scimitar. Oh, if it be my mother earth and not a foreign star, Tell me the way to Boston, and is it near or far? One watchman lifts his lamp and laughs. Ye marry a league to wind. Yet next doth bless the sleeping boy from his mad father's end. A third upon a drawbridge growls. Mare ye to larboard, friend. Forward and backward like a stone the tides have in their hold. He dashes east and then distraught darts west as he is told peter rugg the bostonian that knew the land of old and journeying and resting scarce a melancholy space turns to and fro and round and round the frenzy in his face and ends alway in an angrier mood 
and in a stranger place lost lost to bayberry thicket where plymouth plovers run and where the masts of salem look lordly in the sun lost in the conquered vale and lost by rocky wallaston small thanks have they that guide him awed and aware of blight to hear him shriek denial it sickens them with fright they lied to me a month ago with thy same lie to-night 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 as night succeed he swears at home to bide until pursued with laughter or fled as soon as spied the weather-drenched man is known over the countryside four the seventh at noon's a memory an autumn's closing in the quince is fragrant on the bough and barley chokes the bin o boston 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 o oh, my kith and kin the snow climbs o'er the pasture wall that crackles neath the moon and now the rustic sows the seed damp in his heavy shoon and now the building jays are loud in canopies of june for season after season the three are whirled along misled by every instinct of light or scent or song yea put them in the surest trail the trail is in the wrong upon those wheels in any path the rain will follow loud and he who meets that ghostly man will meet a thundercloud and whosoever speaks with him may next bespeak his shroud though nigh two hundred years have gone doth peter rug the more a gentle answer and true of living lips implore ho oh, show me to my own town and to my open door five where shall he see his own town once dear unto his feet the psalms the tanker to the king the beacon's cliffy seat the gabled neighborhood the stocks set in the middle street how shall he know his own town if now he clatters through much men and cities change that have another love to woo and things occult incredible they find to think and do with such new wonders since he went a broader gossip copes across the crowded triple hills and up the harbor slopes tradition's self for him no more remembers watches hopes but ye o oh unborn children for many a race must thrive and drip away like icicles ere peter rugg arrive if of a sudden to your ears his plaint is blown alive if nigh the city folding in a little lad that cries a wet and weary traveller shall fix you with his eyes and from the crazy carriage lean to spend his heart in sighs that i may enter boston oh help it to befall there would be no fear encompass me no evil craft appall ah but to be in boston god willing after all ye children tremble not but go and lift his bridal brave in the one name the dread name that doth forgive and save and lead him home to copse hill ground and to his father's grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Ballad of Kenelm by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter In Clent Cowbatch, Kenelm King born lieth under a thorn. It was a goodly child, sweet as the gusty May. It was a night that broke on his play, a fair and coaxing night. O oh, little liege, said he, thy sister bids thee come after me a pasture rolling west lies open to the sun bright shod with primroses doth it run and forty oaks be nigh apart and face to face and cowbells all the morn in the space and there the slow thorn bush beside the water grows and hides her mocking head under snow Black stalks of foam with bloom, and never a leaf hath she. Thou crystal of the realm, follow me. Up looked the undefiled. All things, ere I was born, my sister found. Now find me the thorn. They travelled down the lane, 
an hour's dust they made the belted breast of one bore a blade the primroses were out the eyelid oaks were green the cowbells pleasantly tinked between the brook was beaded gold the thorn was burgeoning where evil ascobert slew the king he hid him in the ground nor washed away the dyes nor smoothed the fallen curls from his eyes no father had the babe to bless his bed forlorn no mother now to weep by the thorn there fell upon that place a shaft of heavenly light the thorn in mercy spake ere the night beyond a sister sees her crowned period but at my root a lamb seeth god unto each even so as drew before the cloud the guilty glory past of the proud boy kenelm has the song saint kenelm has the bower his thorn a thousand years is in flower end of poem this recording is in the public domain Vergniaud in the Tumbrel by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk The wheels are silent, the cords are slack, The terrible faces are surging back. France, they too love thee, bid that keep plain, The wrath and carnage I stayed afar colleagues of my white conscience are except my slayers except me slain shed for days in its olden guise the quiet delicate snake skin lies to cheat a boy on his woodland stroll what if he crush it others see beauty's miracle under a tree supple in mail and adroit and whole the shaper rid of a shape and thence growth of an outgrown excellence mounted with infinite might and speed freed like a soul to the heaven it dreamed over life that was and death that seemed a victory and a revenge indeed as the serpent moves to the open spring the while a mock a delusive thing soul in sight of the crowd may be so ye my martyrs arise advance for what is left at the feet of france it is our failure it is not we not to ourselves our strength we brought inexpiable the hand that wrought in us the ruin of no redress the storm the effort the pang the fire the premonition the vast desire the primal passion of righteousness scarce by the pitiful thwarted plan the haste or the studious fears of man drawing a discord from best delight the measure is meted of god most wise nor the future with her adjusted eyes shall speak us false in our dying fight but e'en to me now some use is clear in the builded truth down beaten here for any along the way to spurn since ever our broken task may stand disaster's college in one saved land whence many a stripling state shall learn out of the human shoots the divine be the republic our only sign for whose life's glory our lives have been ambassadors on a noble way tempest-driven and sent astray 
the first and the final good between close to the vision undestroyed the hope not compassed and yet not void we perish so but the world shall mark on the hilltop of our work we died with joy of the groom before the bride with a dawn cry through the battle's dark o last save me on the scaffold's round take heart that after a thirst profound the cup of delicious death is near and whoso hold it or whence it flow o oh, drink it to france to france and know for the gift thou givest thou hast her tear true seed thou wert of the sunnier hour honourable and burst to flower late in a hell-pit poison-walled farewell mortality lopped and pale thou body that wast my friend and hail dear spirit already my name is called end of poem this recording is in the public domain winter boughs by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter how tender and how slow in sunset's cheer far on the hill our quiet treetops fade a broidery of northern seaweed laid long in a book were scarce more fine and clear frost and sad light and windless atmosphere have breathed on them and of their frailties made beauty more sweet than summer's builded shade whose green domes fall to bring this wonder here o oh, ye forgetting and outliving boughs with not a plume gay in the jousts before left for the archer so in evening's eye so stilled so lifted let your lover die, set in the upper calm no voices rouse, stripped, meek, withdrawn against the heavenly door. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. M. A. 1822-1888 By Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. M.A. 1822 to 1888. Good oars for Arnold's sake, by Laleham lightly bound, and near the bank, O oh soft, darling swan. Let not the oar ere weary wake from this his natal ground, but where he slumbered oft, slumber on. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. W. H. seventeen seventy eight to eighteen thirty, by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Nima. W. H. seventeen seventy eight to eighteen thirty. Between the wet trees and the sorry steeple, Keep, time, in dark Soho, What once was Hazlitt, seeker of truth, And finder oft of beauty, Beauty's a sinking light, Ah, none too faithful, But truth, who leaves so here her spent pursuer, Forgets not her great pawn, Herself shall claim it. Therefore sleep safe, thou dear and battling spirit, Safe also on our earth, begetting ever some one love worthy ages and the nations. Nothing falls under to thine eyes eternal. Sleep safe in dark Soho, the stars are shining. Titian and Wordsworth live, the people marches. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Vigil at Arms by Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The Vigil at Arms Keep holy watch with silence, prayer and fasting, Till morning break, and all the bugles play. Unto the one aware from everlasting, Dear are the winners, thou art more than they forth from this peace on manhood's way thou goest flushed with the resolve and radiant in mail blessing supreme for men unborn thou sowest o knight elect o soul ordained to fail and a poem this recording is in the public domain A Madonna of Domenico Ghirlandaggio by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Let thoughts go hence as from a mountain spring of the great dust of battle clean and whole, and the wild birds that have no nest nor goal fold in a young man's breast their tranced wing. For thou art made of purest light a thing art gave beyond her own devout control and light upon thy seeing suffering soul hath wrought a sign for many journeying our sign as up a wayside after rain when the blown beaches purple all the height and clouds sink to the sea marge suddenly the autumn sun how soft how solemn bright moves to the vacant dial so is lain God's meaning hand, thou chosen upon thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring Nightfall by Louise Imogen Guiney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. Spring Nightfall april is sad as if the end she knew the maple's misty red the willow's gold face deep in nimble water seem to hold in hope's own weather their autumnal hue there is no wind no star no sense of dew but the thin vapors gird the mountain old and the moon risen before the west is cold pale with compassion slopes into the blue under the shining dark the day hath passed shining so even of thee was home bereaved thou dear and pensive spirit overcast hardly at all but drawn from light to light who in the doubtful hour and unperceived rebuked adoring hearts with change and flight and a poem this recording is in the public domain. A Friend's Song for Simoisius by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The breath of dew and twilight's grace Be on the lonely battle place And to so young so kind a face the long protecting grasses cling alas alas the one inexorable thing in rocky hollows cool and deep the bees our boyhood hunted sleep the early moon from ida's steep comes to the empty wrestling ring alas alas the one inexorable thing upon the widowed wind recede no echoes of the shepherd's reed and children without laughter lead the war-horse to the watering alas alas the one inexorable thing thou stranger ajax telamon what to the loveliest hast thou done that ne'er with him a maid may run across the marigolds 
in spring alas alas the one inexorable thing with footstep separate and slow the father and the mother go not now upon an urn they know to mingle tears for comforting alas alas the one inexorable thing the world to me has nothing dear beyond the namesake river here o oh, simois is wild and clear and to his brink my heart i bring alas alas the one inexorable thing my heart no more if that might be would stay his waters from the sea to cover troy to cover me to save us from the perishing alas alas the one inexorable thing End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Facile Abbey by Louise Imogen Gwenny. Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Brown. Folly and time have fashioned of thee a songless reed. O not of earth impassioned, thy music's mute indeed. Read from the chantry crannies, the orchids burn and swing, and where the arch began is rest for a raven's wing. And up the bossy column, quick tails of squirrels wave, and black prodigious solemn, a forest fills the nave. Still faithfuller, still faster, to ruin give thy heart, perfect before the master, I as thou wert, thou art. But I am wind that passes in ignorant wild tears, uplifted from the grasses, blown to the void of years. Blown to the void, yet sighing, in thee to merge and cease, last breath of beauty's dying, of sanctity, of peace. Though use nor place forever, unto my soul befall, by no beloved river set in a saintly wall. Do thou by builders given, speech of the dumb to be, beneath thine open heaven, a thassel, pray for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Florentine by Louise Imogen Kine. Read for LibriVox.org. Heart all full of heavenly haste. Too like the bubble dried, on loud little water floating half of an April night, fled from the yaw in music, fled from the eye in light. Dear and stainless heart of a boy, no sweeter thing can be, drawn to the quiet centre of God, who is our sea, whither through troubled valleys. We also follow thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Friendship Broken by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. 1. We chose the faint chill morning, friend and friend. Pacing the twilight out beneath an oak, Soul calling soul to judgment. And we spoke strange things, And deep as any poet penned, Such truth as never truth again can mend. Whatever arts we win, What gods invoke, It was not wrath, It made nor strife nor smoke. Be what it may, It had a solemn end. Farewell, in peace. We of the selfsame throne are foemen vassals, pale astrologers, each a wise skeptic of the other star. Silently, as we went our ways alone, the steadfast sun, whom no poor prayer deters, drew high between us his majestic bar. 
too. Mine was the mood that shows the dearest face through a long avenue, and voices kind, idle, and indeterminate, and blind as rumors from a very distant place. Yet, even so, it gathered the first chase of the first swallows where the lanes inclined, an ebb of wavy wings to serve my mind for round spring's vision. Ah, some equal grace, the calm sense of seeing beauty without sight, befell thee, honorable heart. No less than patient stupor walking from the dawn, albeit thou too wert loser of life's light, like fallen Adam in the wilderness, aware of naught but of the thing withdrawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song of the Lilac by Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Song of the Lilac Above the wall that's broken, and from the coppice thinned, So sacred and so sweet, the lilac and the wind. And when by night the May wind blows, the lilac blooms apart, The memory of his first love is shaken on his heart. In tears it long was buried, in trances wrapped it round. Oh, how they wake it now, the fragrance and the sound. For when by night the May wind blows, the lilac blooms apart. The memory of his first love is shaken on his heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In a Ruin After a Thunderstorm by Louise Imogen Gwenny Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Brown February 12, 2018, Essex Junction, Vermont Keep of the Norman, old to flood and cloud Thou dost reproach me with thy sunset look That in our common menace I forsook Hope the last fear, and stood impartial proud Almost, almost, while ether spake aloud. Death from the smoking stones my spirit shook, Into thy hollow as leaves into a brook, No more than they by heaven's assassins cowed. But now thy thousand scarred steep is flecked, With the calm kisses of the light delayed. Breathe on me, better valor, to subject, My soul to greed of life and grow afraid. Lest, ere her fight's full term, the architect see downfall of the stronghold that he made. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cherry Bow by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. In a new poet's and a new friend's honor. Forth from the scorned town and her gold getting, come men with lutes and bowls, and find a welcome here in my garden. Find bowers and deep shade and windy grasses, and by the south wall, wet and forward jutting, one early branch fire tipped with Roman cherries. O oh, not is absent, O oh, not but you, kind head that far in prison sunk on a weary arm. Feels no God's pity stroking and sighing where the kingly laurels were once so plenty, nor dreams from revels and strange faces turning, how on the strength of my fair tree that knew you, I lean to-day, when most my heart is laden with your rich verses. Since long ago, in other gentler weather, ere wrath and exile were, you lay beneath it, your symbol then, your innocent wild brother, glad with your gladness. What has befallen in the world of wonder, that still it puts forth bubbles of sweet color, and you, and you that burst our eyes with beauty, are sapped and rotten? Alas, when my young guests have done with singing, I break it, leaf and fruit, my garden's glory and hold it high among them, and say after, 
Oh, my poor Ovid, years pass and loves pass too, and yet remember, for the clear time when we were boys together, these tears at home are shed, and with you also your bow is dying. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Irish Peasant Songs by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk One I knead and I spin, but my life is low the while. Oh, I long to be alone and walk abroad a mile. Yet if I walk alone, and think of naught at all why from me that's young should the wild tears fall the shower-stricken earth the earth-colored streams they breathe on me awake and moan to me in dreams and yonder ivy fondling the broke castle wall it pulls upon my heart till the wild tears fall the cabin door looks down a firs lighted hill and far as Leylin cross the fields are green and still but once i hear the blackbird in Leylin hedges call the foolishness is on me and the wild tears fall Two. Tis the time of the year, if the quicken bough be staunch, the green, like a breaker, rolls steady up the branch, and surges in the spaces, and floods the trunk, and heaves in little angry spray, that is the underwhite of leaves, and from the thorn in companies the foamy petals fall and waves of jolly ivy wink along a windy wall tis the time of the year the marsh is full of sound and good and glorious it is to smell the living ground the crimson-headed catkin shakes above the pasture bars the daisy takes the middle field and spangles it with stars and down the bank into the lane the primroses do crowd all colored like the twilight moon and spreading like a cloud tis the time of the year in early light and glad the lark has a music to drive a lover mad the downs are dripping nightly the breathed damps arise deliciously the freshets cool the grayling's golden eyes and lying in a row against the chilly north the sheep enclose a place without a wind for tender lambs to sleep tis the time of the year i turn upon the height to watch from my harrow the dance of going light and if before the sun be hid come slowly up the vale Honora, with her dimpled throat, Honora, with her pail. Hey, but there's many a march for me, and many and many, alas. I fall to work and song again, and let Honora pass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Japanese Anemone by Louise Imogen Gin, read for Livervox. All summer the breaths of the roses around exhale for delicate, passionate sound, and when from a trellis in holiday places they crone and get joan of their slumberous faces, a lad in the lane must shackle his paces. Fragrance of these is a voice in the bower, but low by the wall is my odorless flower, so pure to control not a fume is above her, that poet or bee should delay there and hover, for she is a silence, and therefore I love her. And never a mortal by nor more midnight is called to her hid little house of delight, 
and she keeps from the wind on pillages olden, upon a true stock in the rough weather upholden, her winter white gourd with the hollow moon golden. While the orders of roses content and increase, may think she has found how noble is peace. Like a spirit bestowed from the world to the sever, not absent to men though resumed by the giver, and that long ago being lovely forever. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Triste Noel by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. The ox, he openeth wide the door, and from the snow he calls her in, and he hath seen her smile therefore, our lady without sin. No sooner from sleep a star shall leap, and sooner arrive both king and hind. Amen. Amen. But, oh, the place could I but find. The ox hath hushed his voice, uh, bent true eyes of pity o'er the mow, and on his lovely neck forspent the blessed lays her brow. Around her feet, full warm and sweet, his bowery breath doth meekly dwell. Amen. Amen. But sore am I with vainer travel. The ox is host in Judah's stall, And host of more than onely one, For close she gathereth withal Our lord o' her little son. Glad hind and king their gift may bring, But would to-night my tears were there. Amen. Amen. Between her bosom and his hair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Talisman by Louise Emogen Gwenny. Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Brown. Take temperance to thy breast, while yet is the hour of choosing. As arbitress exquisite, of all that shall thee be tied. For better than fortune's best is mastery in the using, and sweeter than anything sweet the art to lay it aside. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Heathen Earth by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. No round boy satyr racing from the mere Shakes on the mountain lawn his dripping head This many a May, your sister being dead, Ye Christian folk, your sister great and dear. To breathe her name, to think how sad sincere was all her searching, straying, dreaming, dread, how of her natural night was Plato bred, a star to keep the ways of honor clear. Who will not sigh for her? Who can forget not only unto camped Israel, nor martyr maids? that as a bridegroom met the roman lion's roar salvation fell to him be most of praise that he is yet your god through gods not inaccessible end of poem this recording is in the public domain For Isaac Walton by Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima For Isaac Walton What trout shall coax the rod of yore An itchen stream to dip? What lover of her banks restore That sweet Socratic lip? Old fishing and wishing are over many a year. Oh, hush thee, oh, hush thee, heart innocent and dear again the foamy shallows fill the quiet clouds amass 
and soft as bees by catherine hill at dawn the anglers pass and follow the hollow in boughs to disappear o oh, hush thee o oh, hush thee heart innocent and dear nay rise not now nor with them take one silver freckled fool thy sunset a bring each an ache for ancient arts to cool but father lie rather unhurt and idle near o oh, hush thee o oh, hush thee heart innocent and dear while thought of thee to men is yet a sylvan playfellow ne'er by thy marble they forget in pious cheer to go as air falls the prayer falls o'er kingly winchester o oh, hush thee o oh, hush thee heart innocent and dear End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sherman and Horatian Ode by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. This was the truest man of men, the early armored citizen who had with most of sight most passion for the right who first forecasting treason's scope able to sap the founder's hope first to the laic arm cried the ultimate alarm who bent upon his guns the while a misconceived and aching smile and felt through havoc's part a torment of the heart sure when he cut the moated south from shiloh to savannah's mouth braved grandly to the end to conquer like a friend in whom the commonwealth withstood again the carolinian blood the beautiful proud line beneath an evil sign and taught his foes and doubters still how fatal is a good man's will that like a son or sod thinks not itself but god many the captains of our wrath sought thus the pious civic path knowing in what a land their destiny was planned and after with a forward sense a simple roman excellence pledge in their spirit bore that war should be no more thrice roman he who saw the shock calm as a weather wrinkled rock roll in the georgian fen and steadfast aye as then in plenitude of old control that asked secure of his own soul no pardon and no aid if clear his way were made would have nor seat nor bays nor bring the caesar in him to be king but with abstracted ear rode pleased without a cheer now he declines from peace and age and home his triple heritage the last and dearest head of all our perfect dead o oh, what if sorrow cannot reach far in the shallow fords of speech but leads us silent round the sad missouri ground whereon her hero freedom lays the scroll and blazon of her praise and bids to him belong arms trailing and a song and broken flags with ruined dyes bright once in young and dying eyes against the morn to shake for love's familiar sake the blessed broken flags unfurled above a healed and happier world there let them droop and be his tent of victory there in each year's 
auguster light lean in and loose their red and white like apple blossoms strewn upon his burial stone for nothing more the ages through can nature or the nation do for him who helped retrieve our life as we believe save that we also trooping by in sound yet of his battle cry safeguard with general mind our pact as brothers kind and ever nearer to our star adore indeed not what we are but wise reprovings hold thank worthier than gold and bear in faith and rapture such as can eternal issues touch whole from the final field our father sherman's shield end of poem this recording is in the public domain when on the marge of evening by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. When on the marge of evening the last blue light is broken, and winds of dreamy odor are loosened from afar, or when my lattice opens before the lark has spoken on dim laburnum blossoms and morning's dying star, I think of thee. O oh, mind the more if other eyes be sleeping, Whose great and noonday splendor the many share and see, While sacred and forever some perfect law is keeping, The late and early twilight alone and sweet for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rooks in New College Gardens by Louise Imogen Geeney, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Through rosy cloud and over thorny towers, their wings with all the autumn distance filled, from Isis's valley border hundred hills. The rooks are crowding home as evening lowers, not for men only and their musing hours. By battled walls did gracious Wycombe build, these dewy spaces early sown and stilled, these dearest inland melancholy bowers. Blessed birds, a book held open on the knee, below is all they know of Adam's blight, with surer art the while, and simpler right, they follow truth in some monotastic tree where breathe against their innocent breasts by night, the scholar's star, the star of sanctity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Open Time by Louise Imogen Gwenny Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Brown Open time and let him pass shortly where his feet would be, like a leaf at Michaelmas swooning from the tree. Ere its hour the manly mind trembles in a sure decrease, nor the body now can find any hold on peace. Take him, weak and overworn, fold about his dying dream, boyhood and the April morn and the rolling stream. Whether on a sunny ridge showery weather far from here under some deep ivied bridge water rushing clear water quick to cross and part golden light on silver sound weather that was next his heart all the world around soon upon his vision break these in their remembered blue he shall toil no more but wake young in air he knew he has done with roofs and men Open time and let him pass, vague and innocent again, into country grass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Knight Errant Donatello's St. George by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Spirits of old that bore me and set me meek of mind between great dreams before me and deeds as great behind knowing humanity my star as first abroad i ride shall help me wear with every scar honor at eventide let claws of lightning clutch me from summer's groaning cloud or ever malice touch me and glory make me proud oh give my youth my faith my sword choice of the heart's desire a short life in the saddle lord not long life by the fire forethought and recollection rivet mine armor gay the passion for perfection redeem my failing way the arrows of the tragic time from sudden ambush cast with calm angelic touches ope my paradise at last i fear no breathing bowman but only east and west the awful other foeman empowered in my breast the outer fray in the sun shall be the inner beneath the moon and may our lady lend to me sight of the dragon soon end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a dog's memory by louise imogen Guiney. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. To a Dog's Memory The gusty morns are here, When all the reeds ride low with level spear, And on such nights as lured us far of yore, Down rocky alleys yet, and through the pine, The hound star and the pagan hunter shine. But I and thou, ah, field fellow of mine, Together roam no more soft showers go laden now with odors of the sappy orchard bough and brooks begin to brawl along the march the late frost steams from hollow sedges high the finches come the flame blue dragonfly the cowslips common gold the children spy the plume upon the larch there is a music fills the oaks of belmont and the wayland hills southward to dewing's little bubbly stream the heavenly weather's call oh who alive haste not to start delays not to arrive having free feet that never felt a jive way even in a dream but thou instead hast found the sunless april uplands underground and still wherever thou art i must be my beautiful arise in might and mirth for we were tameless travellers from our birth arise against thy narrow door of earth and keep the watch for me end a poem this recording is in the public domain a seventeenth century song by louise imogen gwenny read for librivox dot org by sarah brown she alone of shepherdesses with her blue disdaining eyes who'd not hark a king that dresses all his lute in sighs yet to win catherine i elect for mine emprise no one is like her none above her who so lifts my youth in me that a little more to love her were to leave her free but to win catherine is mine utmost love's degree Distance cold delay and danger build the four walls of her bower she's no sweet for any stranger she's no valley flower and to win catherine 
to her height my heart can tower. Up to beauty's promontory, I will climb nor loudly call. Perfect and escaping glory, folly if I fall. Well to win, Catherine, to be worth her is my all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Pre-Reformation Churches about Oxford by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Asha 1. Imperial Ifle, Cumner bowed in green, and Templar Sanford in the Beltman's call, and sweet-belled Appleton, and Whittam's wall that doth upon adoring ivies lean. Meek Binse, Dorchester, where streams convene, bidding on graves her solemn shadow fall. Clear Cassington, that soars perpetual, Holton and Hampton, and ye towers between. If one of all in your sad courts that come, beloved and disparted, be your own, kin to the souls ye had, while time endures, known to each exiled, each estranged stone, home in the quarries of old Christendom, ah, mark him, he'll lay his cheek to yours. 2. Is this the end? Is this the pilgrim's day for dread, for dereliction, and for tears? Rather, from grass and air and many spheres, in prophecy, a spirit sings away, and under English eaves, more still than they, far off, incoming, wonderful he hears, the long arrested and believing years. Carry the sea wall, shall he, sighing, say, Farewell to faith, for she is dead at best, who had such beauty, or with kisses lain, for witness on her darkened doors, go by with a new psalm. O banished light so nigh, of them was I who bore thee and who blessed. Even here remember me when thou shalt reign. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Still of the Year by Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Still of the Year Up from the willow root, subduing agony's leap, The squirrel and the purple moth turn over amid their sleep, The icicled rocks aloft burn saffron and blue away, And trickling and tinkling the snows of the drift decay. O oh, mine is the head must hang, and share the immortal pang. Winter or spring is fair, thaws hard to bear. Hi-o, my heart's sick. Sweet is cheery time, sweet a shower, a bobolink, and the little trillium blossom tucked under her leaf to think. But here in the vast unborn is the bitterest place to be, till striving and longing shall quicken the earth in me. What change inscrutable is nigh us, we know not well. Gone is the strength to sigh, either to live or die. hi -o, my heart's sick. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A footnote to a famous lyric. By Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. True love's own talisman, which here Shakespeare and Sidney failed to teach, a steel and velvet cavalier gave to our Saxon speech. Chief miracle of theme and touch that upstart enviers adore. I could not love thee, dear, so much. Loved I not honour more. No critic born since Charles was king, But sighed in smiling as he read, Here's theft of the supremest thing 
a poet might have said. Young knight and wit and bow, who won mid war's adventure, ladies' praise, wast well of you, ere you had done, to blight our modern bays. O oh, yet to you, whose random hand struck from the dark hole gems like these, archaic beauty, never planned nor reared by wan degrees, which leaves an artist poor, and art an earldom richer all her years. To you, dead on your shield apart, be Ave passed in tears. How shall this singing era spurn her master, and in lauds be loath? Your worth, your work, bid us discern light exquisite in both. Twas virtue's breath inflamed your lyre, heroic from the heart it ran, nor for the shedding of such fire lives such a manlier man. And till your strophe sweet and bold, so lovely I, so lonely long, love's self outdo, dear Lovelace, hold the pinnacles of song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. T. W. P. eighteen nineteen to eighteen ninety two by Louise Imogen Guiney. Read for LibriVox dot org by Nima. T. W. P. eighteen nineteen to eighteen ninety two. Friend who is gone and dust and rich to day, New England brightly building far away, and crown her liberal walk with company more choice and sweeter talk. Look not on fame, but peace, and in a bower receive at last her fullness and her power. Nor wholly pure of heart, forget thy few who would be where thou art. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Summum Bonum by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Waiting on him who knows us and our need, Most need have we to dare not nor desire, But as he giveth softly to suspire Against his gift with no inglorious greed. For this is joy, though still our joys recede, And, as in octaves of a noble lyre, To move our minds with his, And clearer, higher, sound forth our fate, For this is strength indeed. Thanks to his love, let earth and man dispense in smoke of worship when the heart is stillest a praying more than prayer great good have i till it be greater good to lay it by nor can i lose peace power permanence for thee smile on me from the thing thou willest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Saint Florent Levé by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. The spacious open veil, the veil of doom, is full of autumn sunset. Blue and strong. The semicirc of water sweeps among her lofty acres, each a martyr's tomb, and slowly, slowly, melt into the gloom two little idling clouds that look for long like rose-leaf bodies of two babes in song, Correggio left to flush a convent room. Dear hill deflowered in the frantic war, in my day, 
rather have i seen thee blessed with pastoral roofs to break the darker crest of apple woods by many eyelid loire and fires that still suffuse the lower west blanching the beauty of thine evening star end of poem this recording is in the public domain Hylas by Louise Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Hylas Jar in arm they bade him rove Through the alder's long alcove Where the hid spring musically gushes to the ample valley There's a bird on the underbough Fluting evermore and now Keep young, but who knows how down the woodland corridor, odors deepened more and more. Blossomed dogwood in the briars, struck her faint, delicious fires. Miles of April passed between crevices of closing green. And the moth, the violet lover, by the wellside saw him hover. Ah, the slippery sylvan dark, never after shall he mark noisy ploughman drinking drinking on his drowned cheek down sinking could have serving is that wild absent and bewitched child unto action age and danger thrice a thousand years a stranger fathoms low the naiads sing in a birthday welcoming water white their breast and o'er him water gray their eyes adore him there's a bird on the under bough, fluting evermore and now. Keep young, but who knows how? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nocturne by Louise Imogen Gwenny. Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Brown. The sun that hurt his lovers from on high is fallen. She more merciful is nigh. The blessed one whose beauties even glow gave never wound to any shepherd's eye. Above our pausing boat in shallows drifted, alone her plaintive form ascends the sky. Oh, sing, the water golds are deepening now. A hush has come upon the beechen bough. She shines the while on thee as saint to saint. Sweet interchanged adorings may allow. Sing, dearest, with that lily throat uplifted. They are so like the holy moon and thou. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Kings by Louise Imogen Guinea, recorded for LibriVox.org by Abigail Johnston. A man said unto his angel, My spirits are fallen through, and I cannot carry this battle. O oh, brother, what shall I do? The terrible kings are on me, with spears that are deadly bright, against me so from the cradle do fate and my father's fight. Then said to the man his angel, Thou wavering, foolish soul, back to the ranks! What matter to win or lose the whole as judged by the little judges who hearken not well nor see? Not thus by the outer issue the wise shall interpret thee. Thy will is the very, the only, the solemn event of things. The weakest of hearts defying is stronger than all these kings. Though out of the past they gather, minds doubt and bodily pain, and pallid thirst of the spirit that is kin to the other twain, and grief in a cloud of banners, and ringleted vain desires, and vice with the spoils upon him of thee and thy beaten sires. While kings of eternal evil yet darken the hills about, thy part is with broken sabre to rise in the last redoubt. To fear not sensible failure, nor covet the game at all, but fighting, 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 die, driven against the wall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alexandriana by Louise Imogen Guinea.
Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk. I laid the strewings, sweetest, on thine urn. I lowered the torch, I poured the cup to Dees. Now hush by my little child, and learn, long sleep, how good it is. In vain thy mother prays, wayfaring hence, peace to her heart, where only heartaches dwell. But thou more blessed, O wild intelligence, forget her and farewell. Gentle Grecian passing by, Father of the peace am I, Wouldst thou now in memory Give a soldier's flower to me? Choose the flag I named of yore, Beautiful, worth dying for, That shall wither not, but wave All the year above my grave. Light thou hast, of the moon shade of the dammer pine here on thy hillside bed fair befall thee o fair lily of womanhood patient long and at last here on thy hillside bed happier ah blacilla two white heads the grasses cover dorcas and her lifelong lover while they graced their country closes simply as the brooks and roses where was lot so poor so trodden but they cheered it of a sudden fifty years at home together hand in hand they went elsewhither then first leaving hearts behind comfortless be thou as kind upon thy level tomb till windy winter dawn the fallen leaves delay but plain and pure their traces when themselves are torn from delicate frost away as here to transient frost the absent leaf is such thou wert and art to me so on my passing life is thy long passed touch o oh dear elsithoe hail and be of comfort thou pious zeno late the urn of many a kinsman wreathing on thine own shall even the stranger offer plentiful myrtle here lies one in the earth who scarce of the earth was moulded wise ethelides son himself no lover of study canopus asleep indoors the young invincible runner they from the cliff footpath that see on the grave we made him tameless slant in the wind the bare and beautiful iris stop short full of delight and shout forth see it is canopus runs with white throat forward over the sands to calcis ere the ferryman from the coast of spirits turn the diligent oar that brought thee thither soul remember and leave a kiss upon it for thy desolate father for thy sister which soever be first to cross hereafter jaffa ended cos begun thee aristeus thou wert one fit to trample out the sun who shall think thine ardours are but a cinder in a jar me deep tressed meadows take to your loyal keeping hard by the swish of sickles ever in all sleeping philophron old and tired and glad to be done with reaping as wind that wasteth the unmarried rose 
and mars the golden breakers in the bay hurtful and sweet from heaven forever blows sad thought that roughens all our quiet day and elder poets envy while they weep ion whom first the gods to covert brought here under inland olives laid asleep most wise most happy having done with thought cows in the narrowing august marshes cows in a stretch of water motionless neck on neck overlapped and drooping these in their troubled and dumb communion thou on the steep bank yonder pastora no more ever to lead and love them no more ever thine innocent mourners pass thy tree in the evening heavily hearing another heard girl calling praise thou the mighty mother for what is wrought not me a nameless nothing caring head asleep against her knee end of poem this recording is in the public domain london twelve sonnets by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson on first entering westminster abbey tabor of england since my light is short and faint O oh, rather by the sun anew of timeless passion set my dial true that with thy saints and thee i may consort and wafted in the calm chaucerian port of poets seem a little sail long due and be as one the call of memory drew unto the saddle void since aging court not now for secular love's unquiet lease receive my soul who wrapped in thee erewhile hath broken tryst with transitory things but seal with her a marriage and a space eternal on thine edward's holy isle above the stormy sea of ended kings fog like bodiless water passing in a sigh through palsied streets the fatal shadows flow and in their sharp disastrous undertow suck in the morning sun and all the sky the towery vista sinks upon the eye as if it heard the hebrew bugles blow black and dissolved nor could the founders know how what was built so bright should daily die thy mood with man's is broken and blent in city of stains an ache of thought doth drown the primitive light in which thy life began great as thy dole is smirched with his sin greater and elder yet the love of man full in thy look though the dark visors down st peter ad vincula too well i know pacing the place of awe three queens young save in trouble moulder by more in his halo monmouth's mocking eye the eagle essex in a harpy's claw see more and dudley and stout heads that saw sundown of scotland how with treasons lie white martyrdoms rank in a company breaker and builder of the eternal law oft as i come the hateful garden row of ruined roses hanging from the stem where winds of old defeat yet batter them infects me suddenly must i depart ere thought of men's injustice then and now add to these isles one other broken heart strikers in hyde park a woof reverse the fatal shuttles weave how slow but never once they slip the thread hither upon the georgian idler's tread up spacious ways the lindens interleave clouding the royal air since yester eve come men bereft of time and scant of bread loud who were dumb immortal who were dead through the cowed world their kingdom to retrieve what ails thee england altar mart and grange dream of the knife by night not so 
not so the clear republic waits the general throw along her noonday mountains open range god be with both for one is young to know the others wrote of evil and of change changes in the temple the cry is at thy gates thou darling ground again for oft ere now thy children went beggared and wroth and parting greeting sent some red old alley with a dial crowned some house of honour in glory bound with lives and deaths of spirits excellent some tree rude taken from his kingly tent hard by a little fountain's friendly sound oh for virginia's hand if only that maintain the whole and spoil thee spoiled soon better the scowling strand should lose alas her peopled oasis and where it was all mournful in the cleared quadrangle sat echo and ivy and the loitering moon the lights of london the even fall so slow on hills hath shot far down into the valley's cold extreme untimely midnight spire and roof and stream like fleeing spectres shudder and are not the hampstead hollies from their sylvan plot yet cloudless lean to watch as in a dream from chaos climb with many a sudden gleam london one moment fallen and forgot her booths begin to flare and gases bright prick door and window all her streets obscure sparkle and swarm with nothing true nor sure full as a marsh of mist and winking light heaven thickens over heaven cannot cure her tear by day her fevered smile by night doves ah if man's boast and man's advance be vain and yonder bells of bow loud echoing home and the lone tree foreknow it and the dome the monstrous island of the middle main if each inheritor must sink again under his sires as, as falleth where it clomb back on the gone wave the disheartened foam i crossed cheapside and this was in my brain what folly lies in forecasts and in fears like a wide laughter sweet and opportune wet from the fount three hundred doves of palls shook their wings drizzling the golden noon and in their rain cloud vanished up the walls god keeps i said our little flock of years in the reading room of the british museum praise be the moon of books that doth above a world of men the fallen past behold and fill the spaces else so void and cold to make a very heaven again thereof and where the sun is set behind the grove and faintly unto nether ether rolled all night his whiter image and his mould rose beautiful with looking on her love thou therefore moon of so divine a ray lend to our steps both fortitude and light feebly along a venerable way they climb the infinite or perish quite nothing are days and deeds to such as they while in this liberal house thy face is bright sunday chimes in the city across the bridge where the morning blow the wrinkled tide turns homeward and is fain homeward to drag the black sea goer's chain and the long yards by dowgate dipping low across dispeopled ways patient and slow saint magnus and saint dunstan call in vain from wren's forgotten belfries in the rain down the blank wharves the dropping octaves go forbid not these though no man heed they shower a subtle beauty on the empty hour from all their dock throats aching and outblown i in the prayerless places welcome most like the last gull that up a naked coast deploys her white and steady wing alone a porch in belgravia when after dawn the lordly houses hide till you fall foul of it some piteous guest some girl the damp stones gather to their breast her gold hair rough her rebel garment wide who sleeps with all that luck and life denied camped round 
and dreams how seaward and southwest blue over devon farms the smoke rings rest and sheep and lambs ascend the lit hillside dear of your charity speak low step soft pray for a sinner planet like and still best hearts of all are sometimes set aloft only to see and pass nor yet deplore even wrong itself crowned wrong inscrutable which cannot not have been for evermore york stairs many a musing eye returns to thee against the lurid street disconsolate who kept in green domains thy bridal state with young tide-waters leaping at thy knee unless the ravening smoke and enmity corrode thee quite thy lover sighs and straight desires thee safe afar too graceful gate throned on a terrace of the baboli nay nay thy use is here stand queenly thus till the next fury teach the time and us leisure and will to draw a serious breath not wholly where thou art the soul is cowed nor the fool capital proclaims aloud barter is god while beauty perisheth in the docks where the bells thunder till the day is done and the wild sounds of wilder odors cope where over crouching sail and coiling rope last car and moor along the gangway run where stifled thames spreads in the pallid sun a hive of anarchy from slope to slope flag of my birth my liberty my hope i see thee at the masthead joyous one o thou good guest so oft as young and warm to the home wind thy hoisted colours bound away away from this too thoughtful ground sated with human trespass and despair thee only from the desert from the storm a sick mind follows into eden air end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of a roadside harp by louise imogen guinea